Good afternoon, Shark fans. Coming to you live from Lakeland, Florida, for the postseason edition of Brownie Points. Brownie, good to see you. Thanks for having me again, Must Dave. be nice, a little sunshine out here. Not really expecting to be out here today, but... Yeah, especially with the weather report. But... Absolutely. So, <laughs> sixth trip back to the postseason in eight years. What have you learned during your coaching tenure, coming back time after time? I mean, just how hard it is to get here. Uh, this is a very coveted seat uh, that we have uh, in this tournament, and uh, to be able to get ready for this dogfight is tough, especially coming out of the conference season. So, uh, you know, our, our guys, um, we've, we've tried to give them some rest and recovery. I think that's huge because we don't know what the tournament's going to hold. All we know is the first game that we play, and uh, obviously with Montevallo, we got a great opponent ahead of us that's been playing some good baseball all year. And I think that when we get into um, the tournament and the rhythm of the tournament, um, I think that having experience being here, I think is good for us, um, but it also, uh, it's a new group. We have 23 new players uh, that are on this roster, and I think that that's uh, still like something that they have to get acclimated to. You mentioned the new guys, but obviously we do have guys like Church, guys like Lib, that that's their fourth time come through the postseason. How key is it to lean on those guys and kind of pick their brains for these guys who have not been here before? You know, I think that their veteran leadership and who they are, uh, especially as uh, like elder statesmen in the program, but those guys especially, I mean, those guys are um, leaders amongst leaders. And so uh, I think that their uh, wisdom that they can give to the other guys, I think is very helpful. I think that our team listens to those guys uh, with the sage advice that they have. Um, you know, I think that uh, one thing not to be overlooked is how ridiculously hard it is to get to this tournament and uh, to be four for four for those guys is something very special and um, I hope that every player in our program gets that opportunity right every single year that they're here they're playing in the postseason uh, but uh, let's I, I just hope that they don't take that for granted you guys got a little work in this morning before heading out here what's been your message to the guys since Sunday leading up to this weekend you know I think that the hard part uh, of, of earning the birth is, is is behind us now you know and so I think that the biggest thing I want is our team to understand that um, tournament style baseball is different than a conference weekend than a, than a you know non-conference weekend opponent like we played North Greenville you know what I mean we played some really good teams this year now we're going to be preparing for different opponents and we have to be ready for the different styles of baseball that they bring and um, I at uh, and the, I guess my biggest message to them is that I want us to have a great time. I, I enjoy enjoy this because, again, as a player, I never had the opportunity to get this. You know, a guy like Dylan Harris, this is his first postseason experience, you know, and he's had a, a storied career within the SSC. So I, you got to really enjoy it, uh, take it in, and uh, leave it all out there on the field. Lucky right now, but obviously the weather is supposed to play a factor this week. How does that alter your approach game by game, if at all? You know, I think that um, we just have to be ready for obstacles that are going to come our way. And I think that one thing our team has been um, uh, trained in has been dealing with adversity. We've dealt with adversity throughout the year, you know, maybe not uh, in the sense that's been broadcast to other people. But, you know, we've had injuries, we've had setbacks, we've had uh, things that haven't gone our way. And I think that we've learned from that. So uh, I think that our team is very much prepared to be in an environment that is going to call for us to be able to think on our feet. And I think that one of the advantages um, that our players have is that we try to train them to play the game, not for us to tell them like robotically to play the game. We want them to play the game uh, with loose and reckless abandon and, and uh, to leave it all out there. You guys are here just three weeks ago, good series against Florida Southern. Being accustomed to the surface here, the surroundings, what advantage do you have if at all in that regard? Yeah, I think, I mean, just the familiarity of, of playing at a conference field um, on, the, on the road during the season and then coming here during the postseason, I think helps, uh, especially that it was three weeks away, like we, uh, or go, we weren't concerned about necessarily needing uh, to get the ground balls because of the weather that they've had this week. We're staying off the infield uh, today. But I think that our guys are prepared. I think that their field plays very similar to us. Um, you know, obviously uh, offense is something that you can produce here. Uh, which is a really good thing for us because we like to get the ball in the air and uh, we like to drive and run. We've had a handful of days here to prepare for our opponent on Thursday, Montevallo. What can you tell us about our opponent there? I think it's just a really good club. I think it's typically Gulf South team that comes out of, uh, you know, that comes to these regionals, which is they're going to um, be able to fight you tooth and nail. And, and they, uh, I believe that they haven't been in the postseason in a while. And so I know that they're hungry and uh, they're really well coached by Chandler, uh, who is somebody that I've had the pleasure of getting to know through the coaching industry for a lot of years now. And he's done a great job of building that program. So uh, th they can definitely pitch it and they can definitely bang it. So, I mean, we're, we're going to come out prepared um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the matchup. All SSC teams released just a few hours ago. You get six guys overall, five guys on the first team. 
What does that say about this group, the program, and the direction it continues to head? I'm really proud of that because I, I, I believe um, it's it's warranted for one, you know, and to get the admiration of, uh, you know, my peers as coaches uh, for the players, I think is a very big thing. I think that offensively, uh, we've had a great year producing. Um, and then obviously our, our one and two came out and you know, punched a lot of guys out and they were really difficult uh, in, in a weekend matchup. Um, so I'm really just proud of the guys um, to have those nominations to, then actually received the awards. Uh, I believe it was five first teams and one uh, second team. Uh, it's it's a really, really a great honor for their careers and something that I hope they remember forever. Not a lot of people know it, but Dylan Harris, four time selection now. Put into words how truly incredible that honor is. That's the first out of this group, but I mean, you don't see that hardly ever at all. Yeah, Dylan's just, uh, I mean, he's just, He's a player's player and a coach's player, and, and I hope that every fan that ever get, has gotten the honor of watching him play, especially young fans, can learn from him about how to play the game. Playing the game um, with the desire and uh, the grit that he does is honestly, uh, it's been an honor to coach him. And, you know, um, again, Sean O'Connor over at St. Leo had the pleasure of doing it for four years, you know, with him having a red shirt year there. And uh, for us to get to do it this year, I wish I had four more. And, and um, it, he's taught me a lot about just even how to coach, like what we're looking for in players, you know, the evaluation process, because he doesn't pass all the eye tests, but man, he can play this game. And I think that um, the, the best thing I could say about Dylan Harris is that he's an even better person. And, uh, you know, he's gonna represent the SSC in the Hall of Fame one day. Uh, I'm sure he's gonna be a St. Leo Hall of Famer and he's setting records here at NSU in his only year here. I mean, he's a special player and, uh, you know, uh, I hope that uh, his brothers are listening and, uh, and, and they like uh, what they've seen here. And finally, I'm a bit bummed out in the black and gray today. What's it going to take for us to get a little theme practice out here for regionals? Well, we had a theme practice this morning, you know, and <laughs> it was saying out here. Uh, out here, uh, you know, they, there are rules from the NCAA, and uh, we're just glad they even let us do shorts. So uh, we had board shorts on earlier, you know, and uh, for a little bit of like a rain, rain, go away type of uh, practice. And uh, now we're uh, we're set for business. That wraps up this edition of Brownie Points. First pitch against Montevallo tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tune in on NSUSharks.com or follow along on Twitter at NSU underscore baseball. And I'd like to say one thing to Trevor Romero. We're thinking about you, buddy. We love you, man, and we'll see you soon.